everyone, it's Samantha and today I wanted to make a video about my treatment plan because a lot of people have been asking about it. If you're new, I was originally diagnosed with stage 4 breast cancer in March of 2019 at age 22. I was no evidence of disease for four years before I had a reoccurrence in August of 2023. We found out that cancer had spread to multiple places throughout my spine and pelvis and a few lymph nodes. I ended up finding all of this because one of the lesions in my spine ended up fracturing a vertebrae and it caused a lot of pain, as you can imagine. So about a week after finding that out, I had surgery to stabilize my spine. I'm in a lot less pain now since having that surgery, but it has been a long, painful recovery process. I still can't lift my daughter up off the ground. Um, she's 10 months old, but she is a very heavy 10 month old. She's probably like close to 25 pounds. <laughs> a lot of you guys know I lived in Alaska for a year, so I actually got that back surgery in Alaska. And then when I was okay to fly, we flew back to the lower 48. When I got back here, I had a PET scan to make sure I could see all the places where the cancer had spread and compare it to my previous PET scans. We found it throughout multiple bones and a few lymph nodes, but mostly bones. I then discussed a lot of treatment options with my oncologist. In mid-September, I ended up getting three rounds of radiation to the spot on my spine that caused the fracture. And then after that, we were kind of in a waiting period and let me explain why. So there were a few options that I had for treatment. One option was to go on hormone therapy, but my oncologist knew that last time I was on hormone therapy, it caused a lot of problems for me. I did not tolerate it well at all. And so he didn't really want that for me because he didn't want my quality of life to be absolutely horrible like it was. The option that they were excited about was actually a clinical trial. You can look up this trial on the internet. I have the paperwork right here, but it's called Testing the addition of radium therapy, radium-223 dichloride to a usual chemotherapy treatment, paslitaxel, I don't actually know how to say that, but it's taxol chemotherapy, for advanced breast cancer spread to the bones. Taxol chemo is one of the types of chemo that I got last time around in 2019. Basically, I was the perfect candidate for this clinical trial because it was specifically for stage 4 breast cancer patients that had bone metastases. And so I didn't really have any other cancer anywhere else other than my bones. So this was like the perfect thing. So basically this trial is testing using this new drug, radium-223 dichloride. And this new drug is new, but it's actually used currently and it's currently approved for use in patients with metastatic prostate cancer that has spread to the bones. It is showing great results in those types of patients, so now they're testing it for breast cancer. But currently you can't get it unless you're on the trial. My oncologist really wanted me to get this drug because of all the promising results that it's had with prostate cancer patients. But the problem is, is that in this trial I only had a 50% chance of getting this drug. Because the trial is testing the addition of the drug. So they have one group that is just taxol chemotherapy that they're testing how that normally works, and they have another group which is using taxol chemotherapy and the radium to see if that ends up having a better outcome for patients. So my oncologist was basically like, yeah, so you have to think about this because I really want you to have this radium treatment, but I don't necessarily think that having just taxol chemotherapy is the best course of treatment for you. And there's no way to request to be in one arm of the trial over the other because that completely defeats the purpose of a clinical trial, which is trying to test whether one has a better outcome or the other. So if you take away that randomization and people are just volunteering for sides, then it, then it, yeah, that, that, that doesn't work. <laughs> but my oncologist did tell me that I will know whether I'm in the radium group or not. I'll get randomized, but it's not like I can't know which group I'm in. Okay, so hopefully the trial option makes sense. The third option that my oncologist recommended was doing an oral chemo route. So I would take an oral chemo pill that he thinks is tolerated a lot better than hormone therapy and maybe it would work well. And we could try that out first and see if it worked well for me. So basically I was between those two options because I knew I did not want to try hormone therapy first. Maybe I'd go on it down the line if I needed to, but I do not want to try that first because I know how bad it was. So basically I was thinking I either want to do the trial and have the radium or I want to do the oral chemo pill. So basically I was like, this is not up to me. This is just a 50-50 chance. I'm leaving this up to God to decide which treatment to have and I'm trusting that 
whichever one happens is the one that's going to be the best option for me. And also my thought process was if I can't get the radium, then maybe I can just do the oral chemo pill and survive as long as possible. And then maybe eventually like years down the line, that radium treatment will become approved for breast cancer and anyone can just get it. So I know I've mentioned before that it was kind of complicated, my treatment options. And so these were all the things that we were weighing at the time. The other problem was I started having a bunch more pain. So while we were waiting to see if I could fill out the paperwork to get approved for the trial and everything, I started having way more pain in my hips and my back and my neck. And these were all places that had like cancer in them that could have explained the pain. And so because of this, I went back to my radiation oncologist and he was like, okay, so these are the spots in your hips. That's probably what's causing you the most pain right now. We can shoot these spots with radiation. And that would all be fine and great, but I cannot do radiation at the same time as being on the trial because having enough pain that you need radiation is an endpoint for the trial. You need to come off the trial if that happens. So, so if I wanted to get this radiation, I had to get it before I started the trial. But the other problem is, is that I can't start the trial until it's been 14 days past my last dose of radiation. Because after 14 days, I need to get a scan that basically like sends the information to them that will qualify me for the trial because they can't have that scan too close to radiation because the radiation like messes up stuff and they can't see things on the sca scan as well. So then I was left with this decision of, do I wanna go get this radiation now and delay getting approved on the trial for another whole 14 days? Or do I wanna just live with this pain and wait the 14 days from my previous dose of radiation because I already had those three doses of radiation on my back, I had to wait the 15, 14 days from then. I talked this over with multiple doctors and depending on the day, I was in sometimes severe amounts of pain, sometimes not as bad. So, but since I wasn't in like an extreme excruciating amount of pain every day, I decided to not get the radiation and to be able to start the trial as soon as possible. The doctors told me that if you get on the trial and you get the radium drug, that should start helping your pain pretty much immediately. But if you don't get the radium drug, then the Taxol on its own might work slower. So basically my thought was get to 14 days past my last dose of radiation, get the scan, see if I get approved for the trial and see what arm of the trial I get on, start the treatment for the trial. And if it, my pain's not going away, just leave the trial and go get radiation. And then maybe start the oral chemo pill. Hopefully I'm making sense so far because I know you guys were like, I don't know why you can't tell me what your treatment plan is. It's because it was so complicated. Like, d does it make sense now? Like there were a lot of things. I ended up getting the scan for the trial and I had to wait. I think I got it on a Thursday and I had to wait to learn about the results on Tuesday because they had to gather my scans. They had to send off biopsy results and whatnot. And then I had to get approved for the trial. Once I got the approval for the trial, they were able to randomize me and they did randomize me into the radium 223 dichloride arm of the trial. So I am receiving Taxol chemotherapy and also this radium 223 drug thing. And so that's why I went to go get a port because I was gonna be getting that chemotherapy. If I was just gonna be on the oral chemo pill, then I wouldn't have needed a port because it doesn't go into your veins, it's just a pill. Um, but yeah, now I need a port because I'm getting that chemo. Okay, so now that you understand what treatment option I picked, I'll explain what it is. So basically I get Taxol chemotherapy three weeks on, one week off. I get one treatment of the radium a month. So day one of the trial, I received the radium 223 dichloride and Taxol chemotherapy on the same day. Then on day eight, so the next week, I received just Taxol chemo, day 15, I'm going to receive just Taxol chemo. Day 22, I'm gonna have a break, nothing on that day. And then I start the next cycle. So day one of the next cycle, Taxol and radium. And then day eight, just Taxol, so on, so on, so on. So basically there's just this whole set of requirements that I need to follow to make sure um, everyone on the trial is getting the same type of treatment. So, so far everything is going pretty well. When this video is posted, I probably will have already had my third treatment of Taxol, but 
as of right now of me filming this, I've only had two. And my pain actually has decreased a lot. After the first week, um, I have felt so much better with my pain. I had a bunch of other side effects the first week. Um, I had a lot of nausea, I had a lot of diarrhea, I had a lot of fatigue, um, but you would expect that with chemo and I'm not sure if the radium has caused certain side effects or what, but my second round of chemo I did not have as bad of a reaction to. I also got like a skin rash on my arm. I don't know if you can see that in this video or not, but it's kind of gross and I did not get that last time I was on Taxol, even though I know a lot of people get that. So yeah, I'm having like the regular Taxol fatigue and nausea that I had last time around, so I kind of know what to expect. The radium treatment is once a month for six months, and then once I finish those six months, I can stay on the Taxol for as long as it's working, or for as long as I can tolerate the side effects, because last time around when I got Taxol chemotherapy, I did have to stop early because I had too much neuropathy in my fingertips and my toes, and so my oncologist recommended that I stop to not affect my quality of life too much, so if that happens again, then I might have to stop the Taxol early, I don't know. So far, I'm very hopeful that this works. Um, I should be getting a scan at some point to kind of see if my cancer has changed or has decreased but I am feeling a lot less pain, so I do think it is working. I'm still having a lot of pain in my hips, but it's just nowhere near the degree it was. Like, I'm sitting on the floor right now, and there was a point before I started this trial that I could not sit on the floor, and I was basically having nausea every day just from being in so much pain. Like, that's how you can tell I was in a lot of pain was because I just I didn't want to eat anything so that also might have been why my side effects were worse the first time around um, with the first treatment of Taxol on the radium because I was still like in a bunch of pain then so I could have just had higher nausea and now I don't have as much nausea because I'm not in as much pain but just like that silly short says that I posted a while ago Day three of chemo, that's the one that hits ya, and that's the one that kills ya. You feel pretty good on the first day that you get chemo, the next day, it's okay, you're starting to feel a little fatigued. Day three, that's when the nausea hits, that's when the diarrhea hits for me, that's when I feel this mind-numbing fatigue where you have to think super hard to do literally anything. Like, if you're like, oh, I need to get up and go to the bathroom, it takes like so much concentration. Whereas normally, you just, you know, go on autopilot, you're like, oh, I just need to go to the bathroom, but no, you have to think through everything you do. Like I said, I'm still not able to lift my baby. I'm hoping to maybe start some physical therapy soon to help with that. But I know that this back surgery, it takes a long time for it to heal. Like, I think they say you're not really fully he healed until like a year after your surgery or something. And I guess right now it's been two months, a little over two months. That 14 days when I had to wait to get the scan for the trial was basically torture. I felt like I was just sitting around waiting and the cancer was just growing and spreading. And every cancer patient knows that the waiting period in a cancer diagnosis is the hardest part. Whenever you're in between treatments, it just feels like you're doing nothing and it sucks and you're just sitting there like, oh, I just wanna get started. So that's kind of why I wasn't really posting much because I was just like, people were asking me, what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Um, but I'm glad to know what I'm doing now. I'm glad that we have a plan and we're just gonna go with this plan, take it one day at a time, one step at a time, see how it goes. And right now everything's going well, so hopefully that just continues. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to try to answer them. But um, a lot of this information's online. You can you can find out a lot about this study if you if you are interested in it. If you're a breast cancer patient that mainly has metastases to your bones, this is a good trial to consider for you, and it's in multiple states, so multiple places around the country uh, you can go and get on this trial. Thanks so much for watching, subscribe if you want, and uh, yeah, that's all, bye. <clears throat> oh, a lot of you guys have been asking if I'm gonna lose my hair. I haven't started losing it yet, it hasn't really shed at all yet either, but um, this is Taxol Chemo and it shouldn't be as like crazy hair loss as with AC. As last time when I got chemo, I got AC Chemo first and then I got Taxol. AC Chemo is a lot more aggressive on hair loss so it kind of just like fell out and it was like, 
it, it's gone. Like, it's not coming back. I've been told that it's a lot more gradual when you're just doing Taxol. So we'll see. Um, they said that some people hold on to their hair for a really, really long time. I'm not really sure what I'll do because last time I was getting really annoyed, even when it was just coming out in clumps. I'm not sure I can be one of those people that just lets it thin and thin and thin until like it's gone forever. I'll probably like want to cut it a little bit or something because it'll get annoying, but we'll we'll see what happens when I come to it. But yeah, I probably will lose my hair, but it might just take a little bit of time. Now that's all. Bye.